Oops. So we've been getting a lot of great emails from you guys. Uh, we appreciate it. Thank you for reaching out and sharing your stories. Some good stuff in here for sure. Um, so this is a good one. This is called, so, you know, Halloween's coming up. And, and I don't know what Halloween's going to look like. Apparently it isn't canceled. Halloween stores are open everywhere. Hmm. And I know that's been kind of a popular thing on social media that people are talking about. Um, anyway, this is pretty funny. Halloween horror story. Um, here we go. Dear Francis and Julio, hope this gives you a chuckle since it's equally mortifying and hilarious. When I was in college, I started to see this guy. And after a Halloween party, I stayed over at his college house. He told me in the morning that his parents were coming to pick him up after attending mass at the church on campus. It was a private Catholic school. Hmm. And since I had never met them, I should leave before they came so I didn't meet them hungover and in my costume from the night before. <laughs> in my drunken state, I confused the time that mass was over and started walking back to my dorm when I thought mass was still going on. Keep in mind, he never gave me a change of clothes, so I was walking to my dorm, past the church, at 8 a.m. on a Sunday morning in a Playboy bunny costume. Freshman year was rough. Well, mass let out, let out at 8 a.m. instead of 8.30, and all the churchgoers see me doing my walk of shame. It's now four years later, and I'm still dating the guy and have met his parents hundreds of times. Well, his younger sister got dropped off at college last week, and his dad told his sister to be careful of doing a walk of shame and explained how they saw some, quote, poor girl looking ridiculous <laughs> walking past the church the morning after Halloween wearing a Playboy Bunny costume. Little did they know that I was that poor girl. Wow. Uh, do me and my boyfriend keep this little secret or make a joke about it? Um, dude. That's hysterical. Take that one to the grave. Great, great email. <laughs> really good. Really fun. Love wow. a good walk of shame, dude. Yeah. Did you, um, <laughs> did you ever do the walks of shame? Like, can I even? Like, That's can guys the do them? I will say that that is one of those things that is so much worse for women than it is for men. And it all comes down to the shoes, the, I think. Yeah, I think you, you're, you're on to something there. And okay. I was going to say, the only times where I've done some kind of quasi walk of shame is where I'm in, like, like I used to wear some crazy shit in college. I'm wearing, like, antique denim jeans and, like, loafers <laughs> and, like... <laughs> And some fucking pr yeah. like print T-shirt that was ridiculous, uh -huh. like some affliction T-shirt, yeah, some bullshit. Yeah, tap out. Which I used to wear, um, like before it got the tap out like reputation. Uh -huh. Still not good, but that's like as close as I've ever come to one. But I agree, the shoes are the killer, and especially for the girls. If you're wearing these crazy heels, oh, man, right, right, yeah. I mean, a guy walking home, you know, wearing a a rumpled tuxedo with his <laughs> bow tie not tied but hanging loose and sort of at different ang odds you know different lengths that's just james bond coming home from the war <laughs> do you know what i mean there's a kind of a charming oh you know he clearly just defeated some bad guys vibe to that <laughs> not oh god he slept in a, a girl's dorm room and didn't prepare right. to return in the morning right right so do you think that uh, it's on the, if if a lady comes, you know, you meet a girl at a party or your girlfriend or whatever, and she sleeps over, is it your duty to give her a comfortable sweatshirt and some kind of sweatpants or something to to rock home? I think so. We've like, And we've sort of talked about this in the past as far as like, you know, you give her something. But I think that for most people, the walk of shame is pretty college exclusive for a couple of reasons. First of all, lack of access to funds. So like you're not mm -hmm. paying, you don't want to pay for an Uber maybe because you're in college, you don't have money, whatever. Or maybe, you know, and a lot of these stories also were like the pre-Uber age. I'm sure it's like a little bit better now that that technology exists. But to your point, on college campuses, oftentimes you're walking right, home. Right, exactly. And, and as an adult, you probably have a car or whatever. But in New York City, we do still see walk of shames. You do, but New York City has the Uber thing. Exactly. Now, right. Yes, right. But I also remember this, like I knew girls in college who would do walks of shame. And guys would give them 20 bucks to take a taxi, but they would pocket the cash and just do the walk of shame like a champ. Wow. But you got to respect that. You know I, I like mean? that. That is good. I don't mind that at all. Lunch and dinner on the house, baby. Yeah. <laughs> Girls at the end of the month just pool all their walk of shame money and go out for a big brunch. <laughs> Let's put all the 20. Wow, you did really good work this month, Mer Meredith. Yeah, I slept with like 14 guys and wore really cl bad clothes that I couldn't walk home in. 
<laughs> Dude, I, you talk about New York City, though. Here's a question. One time, <laughs> one time, a girl came over and uh, slept, spent the night. This was back when I was single. Fuck yeah. And uh, in the morning, you know, <laughs> she, she, she was wearing clothes that were not, it was like jeans and a shirt or something. So it wasn't as if I was sending her home in like a, a tube top 80s theme party dress mm -hmm. <laughs> and stilettos. Uh, but. She's hanging out, and I was pretty hungover, so I didn't really have my wits about me. And she was kind of lingering, and I was just on the couch, being like trying to survive, drink some water, or whatever. <laughs> and I was like, you know, after a while, I was like, do, do, you, do you would you like anything, like whatever? And she goes, well, because she, she she kept talking about wanting to go home and like leave, and I was like, yeah, no problem. And finally, she goes, well, she, the least you could do is call me an Uber. Ooh. And I remember thinking, no the least i could do is nothing <laughs> that's what least means <laughs> calling you an uber is way up on yeah. the scale of doing things Dude, that's quite much closer to the most you can do there are so many things that i could do that would even be more least than call you an uber honestly the only thing more than call uber is like carry yeah. Call a blade. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Which is the private or helicopter. build you a house within my house. <laughs> <laughs> so that you're here already. Build Ask you to move like in. I don't know. <laughs> Erect a teepee for you. Dude, some sort of dwelling. The only things that are more than that are crazy. Yeah. yeah. You're right. Yeah. So that's what least means. Least means nothing. The least, least amount of something is nothing. Yeah, that's hilarious. And then you could get into negative tor territory where I could actually make it harder for her to get home. <laughs> like put some obstacles in the way, a couple bears if I've got them. <laughs> Ask for collateral. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll call you an Uber, but you need to tell me how much you hate your dad on camera. <laughs> dude, that's great, dude. Oh, my God. Dude, it's tough out there, man. Oh, it is. Hey, thanks for watching our video. You see these other ones here? I don't know if I'm pointing at them, but if I am, they're better. Try those. Subscribe to our channel. Oops, the podcast. We'll see ya. Oops.